Nothing Stopped Sophie, the story of unshakable mathematician Sophie Germain. Written by Cheryl Bardot, illustrated by Barbara McClintock, published by Little Brown and Company. Long ago in Paris, a young girl named Sophie Germain understood that math could do more than measure lengths of silk and tally accounts in her father's shop. In those days, people scoffed at girls for thinking about anything more serious than hair ribbons or what music to play on the pianoforte. But nothing stopped Sophie. Telling Sophie not to think about math was like telling a bird not to soar. Ideas came to Sophie day and night, and she sneaked out of bed to study math while others slept. Monsieur and Madame Germain worried that being smart would bring their daughter heartbreak and scorn. So they seized Sophie's candles, they stopped lighting fires in her room, and they snatched away her warm dresses, desperate to make her stay tucked into bed. Still, Nothing stopped Sophie. One morning, Sophie was found bundled in blankets, asleep at her desk, next to a pot of ink that had frozen solid. Finally, Sophie's parents let their daughter indulge her mathematical dreams. For a girl to become a mathematician would be impossible anyway. Sophie grew up during the French Revolution, when starving peasants rioted against rich kings and nobles who feasted on sausages, salads, and sweets. When the streets were unsafe outdoors, Sophie's parents kept her indoors. As cries for equality echoed from the roof tiles, she cherished how math could make sense of the world. Math, with its clear and simple laws. Math with its strong sense of order, math, which defines when the world is in balance. Curled up in her father's library, Sophie barely heard the distant cannons that rattled the shutters. Sophie discovered that mathematicians use numbers as poets use letters as a language to question, explore, and solve the secrets of the universe. She read how ancient Greeks wrote equations that made the impossible possible. Water flowed uphill. A lone man pulled mighty ships ashore. A scholar measured the size of the earth. Sophie longed to become a mathematician and write such poems of her own. By the time Sophie was 19, the French Revolution had simmered down and it was safe to walk the streets of Paris again. Sophie wanted to attend a university, but no professor would read a woman's work. So she secretly acquired notes from math classes and sent in homework by mail. She signed her papers, Monsieur Leblanc. Then one day, a knock came at the door. Professor Joseph Louis Lagrange had come to meet the mysterious student who sent in extraordinary homework without coming to class. We'll never know who received the greater shock. Professor Lagrange could not have guessed that Monsieur Leblanc was a modest young lady in a ruffled blouse with dark hair in a top knot. And Sophie could not have imagined a visit from a world famous scholar. Was her dream about to take flight? With Sophie's secret discovered, news of the girl prodigy rippled through Paris. Gossips couldn't imagine a girl so smart until they met her themselves. And soon Sophie's calendar swelled with dinner parties. She hardly knew what to say in these stuffy drawing rooms surrounded by gawkers and finery. 
She ached to talk seriously about math, yet no mathematician would take a young lady truly under his wing. Still, nothing stopped Sophie. She kept up her studies. She seized every chance to chat with scholars at luncheons and in salons. Under her pen name, she wrote to one of the most brilliant mathematicians ever. Carl Friedrich Gauss even wrote back. But his letters stopped coming soon after he discovered that Mr. LeBlanc was a woman. At age 32, Sophie witnessed an experiment that revealed the hidden laws of math at work in our everyday world. She saw a scientist sprinkle sand onto a glass plate. As he rubbed a violin bow against the plate's edge, vibrations shook the glass until it rang out with sound. Astonished, Sophie watched the sand dance across the plate. It formed circles, then diamonds, then figure eights. The higher the note, the more quickly the vibrations shook the plate and the more intricate the sand's pattern became. Suddenly, Sophie realized that every hand knocking on a door, her own boots clicking along the cobblestones, every motion sent vibrations surging through nearby objects, just as waves flowed through water. The rest of Paris was agog too. The prestigious Academy of Sciences offered a medal worth 3,000 francs to anyone who could find a mathematical formula that would predict patterns of vibration. This information could affect buildings, bridges, and who knew what else? How much vibration was too much? At what point would an object break? Academy scholars called the problem impossible. Their heads spun just thinking about the many ways vibration might move an object. But nothing stopped Sophie. Just as math measures how bird wings move up and down during flight, Sophie knew math could measure a surface moving up and down from vibration. She made her best guesses at what would affect this movement. Then she added and subtracted and multiplied and divided. Sophie spent two years trying numbers in different combinations to write her equations. Then she submitted her work to the Academy. And this time, Sophie used her own name. Sophie's work sent shockwaves through Paris. The contest had received only one entry and it had come from a woman. Yet Sophie's solution was incorrect. When the Academy extended the contest, Sophie returned to work. For two more years, she tested her predictions by vibrating sand on plates. Finally, after thousands of calculations, the sand moved just how Sophie's numbers foretold. Her equation was as precise and eloquent as a poem. Sophie submitted the only entry to the Academy again. This time, scholars agreed that her equation was correct, but they rejected her explanation for why it worked. Still, nothing stopped Sophie. She revised her research and submitted it to the Academy one more time. In 1816, Sophie Germain became the first woman to win a grand prize from the Royal Academy of Sciences. After six years, she had shaken the Academy enough to shatter its resistance. No one could deny that she was a mathematician now. The human spirit, she later reflected, requires more resources inside when outside it has less. After Sophie's work, mathematicians sought even better ways to predict vibration patterns. Eventually, their discoveries made it possible to build the Eiffel Tower in Paris and modern skyscrapers and lengthy bridges all over the world. Sophie is celebrated today because nothing stopped her. 
Her fearlessness and perseverance have inspired many people. Perhaps she will also inspire you.